Final thoughts. While often decried as a negative aspect of today's culture, we live online now. We can put as many screen time limits on our kids and mock the screen. Addicted zombies we all are, all we want. And it won't change the fact that the world we live in and minister in is tied to an online one now, and is possibly much for the near and far future. We have to recognize that those lives online are no less a part of God's sovereign plan than the log cabins and pioneering of the Puritans. We can choose to reject this new world online and become less and less relevant to an online population, or we can venture in. Maybe the ends of the earth aren't where the circle of the globe, aren't where we circle the globe with sail-powered boats, but where groups of people can exist but can't be walked up to. We can send missionaries via helicopter to every square inch of this world now. Nothing is stopping us. But there are millions of people online who don't know Jesus and who have never and we have near unfettered access to them through our phones and computers. It has never been like this before. That connectedness is a moving mark on an upward slope of a bell curve. James says in the letter of the New Testament that God gives wisdom to all who ask it, James 1.5. That maybe that's where we should start. Not every church is going to have the right people to do an active ministry online, but they won't know unless they take a long and wise look at their capabilities and congregations. Not every Christian will be able to do ministry online either, but that doesn't mean that online ministry shouldn't happen. I think it's as easy as le easily as you can Google your next fact check or Bible verse. The conventions of online ministry should start, like the one in this book. Um, yeah, and I still believe that. Um, even though I'm going to be republishing a lot of this book and adding to it and some and you know adding retractions to it and that kind of stuff, I still believe it that you know we can't get away from how prevalent online is in society and I haven't been convinced that a totaler's approach of like rejecting online outright uh, is important obviously I'm doing a YouTube video but um, I think it's important I think that it needs to be done and it's one of the reasons why I wrote this book one of the reasons why I wanted to try is because at the time back in 2019 no one was talking about online ministry or the theology or ecclesiology of doing online church and what that meant and what it didn't mean. So, you know, it's something I wanted to do, something I've done. I'm glad I've been able to do all these chapters and really explain each one of them. Uh, I am gonna be rewriting this. I don't know what the timeline looks like that, but uh, you can expect all the chapters to basically hit on the notes that, um, that I have on the ends of each one of these chapters. I don't just wanna, you know, to leave it, I am going to publish it, and then uh, there'll be, a, you know, a 2.0 version available at one point to hopefully kind of maintain this track of like let's take this stuff seriously let's talk about it and let's be biblical about how we're doing ministry online so that you know we can see christ's glory increase and so we can see the church's uh influence and scope increase as well so um hope you guys enjoyed the audiobooks and the chapters and uh, we will talk to you soon take care